One of my favorite things to do on camera is to create a problem and solve it using bash scripting, using a lot of command line utilities, using a lot of the GNU core utils that are available to us on Linux. And what I wanted to do today is one of the most common applications, one of the most common kinds of programs people want on a personal computer is an application that keeps time. So something that you think of it as a timer or a countdown or a stopwatch, something that just ticks off seconds or minutes or whatever it happens to be that you're trying to track as far as time. And of course, there are probably hundreds of these applications available to us on Linux. You don't have to write your own stopwatch or countdown script or anything like that. But what's the fun in that? I, I wanted to show you today, I'm going to open up a terminal and with many of the basic GNU core utils, we can actually get a pretty accurate stopwatch or a countdown. And you could literally do this in a hundred ways, I'm just going to show you using some of the most frequently used commands in the Linux terminal how you can achieve this. So let me switch over to my desktop and I'm going to go ahead and switch to this workspace where I have a terminal open. I'm inside the bash shell and I'm zoomed in here so hopefully you guys can see everything I'm about to do. Now let's start with creating a basic timer on Linux. So one of the standard uh, command line utilities on Linux is the command time. What does time do? Well you do time and then some other command after it and it gives you the time that it took that command to execute. For example, if I did time Firefox and I hit enter, I'm not sure if Firefox is installed on my computer. It is. You know, it launches Firefox here. It, let me get back to the terminal and it will tell me the time that it took to run that command. So a really simple way to do a timer is to time and then time some command that really has no output or no input. For example, the cat command, if I do cat and then this dash behind it, a single hyphen, what this means is cat is going to take standard input. That's what the hyphen's signifying, but what's it taking as standard input? We really didn't direct anything into the cat command, right? Cat dash, that's the only thing. The time command has nothing to do with the cat command. This is just running a time on that. Uh, the cat command though is smart enough. It's always going to try to read from standard input so we don't have to specify the dash. But if I run time cat, watch what happens. Cat is kind of, it's running, it's trying to cat standard input, but we really didn't give it anything to have standard input so it's just it's timing it's running the time right until we uh, kill this process it'll be a never-ending process until I hit control C to kill the timer basically and you can see that ran for 19.929 seconds so that is a real easy way anytime you just want to get a quick uh, timer on something basically think of time cat as a stopwatch just time cat hit enter and when you want to stop the stopwatch Control C, and that gives you a really accurate time. And like so many things on Linux, there's a hundred different ways I could do this. I could actually, instead of timing cat, I could time the uh, the read command and hit enter. And what's it reading? Well, we didn't specify, right? It's just going to be one of these uh, never ending processes, right? It's just gonna keep running and running until finally Control C, and then once again, we get the time. So that's a pretty accurate stopwatch, either the time cat command or the time read command. But what if you want to feed this kind of stopwatch a certain amount of seconds? Maybe I only want it to run for exactly five seconds or 10 seconds or a minute or whatever it happens to be. Well, in that case, instead of just using the time command, you want to use the timeout command. The timeout command, you feed it a specific amount of times. Maybe I'm going to do five seconds, for example. And then you feed it some kind of command to actually run the timeout five seconds on. In this case, because we've already done cat and read without any standard input, we could do timeout space five seconds space cat space dash for standard input. We're not giving it any standard input. So this is going to just be a running process that should in exactly five seconds timeout and it does. Now I'm not crazy about not having any kind of output at the end of it. So what I would do is I would probably do something like timeout five seconds cat dash and then do a semicolon and then we're going to have it run the command echo done exclamation. And now let's go ahead and wait for the timeout of five seconds. 
and then at the end it should echo the word done exclamation. And once again, just like everything on Linux, there's a dozen different ways I could have done the exact same thing here. Instead of timeout five seconds on cat, what I could just do is in the bash shell, of course, you have the sleep command. And what you could do is sleep five, that tells the shell, sleep for five seconds. And then what I could do, semicolon, and then echo, once again, the word done. So what's the bash shell doing? It's sleeping for exactly five seconds, and then once it's done, it echoes done. Now let me switch over to a different workspace with a new terminal because I'm going to have to kill this terminal after I enter this command. Now this is strictly for fun, what I'm about to do here. So what we're going to do is we're going to read space dash T5. So we're going to read for five seconds and then pipe pipe. So two pipes, right? The or, and we're going to run a command line utility many people are not familiar with. I just something you'll never really use, but it is their speaker dash test. And we're going to use the flag dash T. And then the argument for dash T will be sign, meaning that the speaker test, what's it going to use for a sound for this speaker test? It's going to use a sine wave. And then dash F is the frequency of the sine wave. I've chosen 500 for the frequency. Watch what happens here. So it's going to read for five seconds and then it's going to run that speaker test. Oh my goodness. Let me kill the terminal. Woo, that will hurt your ears. <laughs> so let me go ahead and clear this terminal. Now another standard command line utility is the date command. The date command, it's nice because uh, we really don't have to play with any formatting here. What I could do is I could use a while loop to print out the date and because the date includes hours, minutes, and seconds, that actually is a nice little timer. So what I could do is I could, well, true, and then semicolon, do printf, and what are we gonna print here? We're gonna do percent %s, escape r, and then the ending single quote there. So what we wanna do is, well, this is true, I want you to print whatever value with a carriage return, that's the escape r there, the uh, backslash r, and what exactly is percent %s going to be in that printf statement? Well, we need to actually specify a command, so I'm gonna do date. And then any while loop, of course, needs to have done at the end, so semicolon and then done. And if I did this correctly, what this should do is print the date command forever, right? Every single second, right? And look what happens here, you see? That is a really nice timer. Now, like everything else I've shown you, I've shown you multiple ways basically to do the same thing. Instead of using a while loop, using the print command to print out the output from the date command, um, we could do a for loop instead. And instead of date, we could actually sequence uh, some numbers here. So what I could do is I could sequence 60, and then I'm gonna do space minus one, and then one. So we're gonna sequence 60 numbers. Let's do it in reverse order. So this will be more of a countdown. Let me scroll back up. You can see we started at 60, and we went down all the way to one, decrementing you know, by one. So let me clear the screen here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do 4i in, and let's do 4i in a command. So I'm going to do the dollar sign in parentheses. What's the command? Well, obviously, we're going to do sequence 60 space minus 1 space 1. And then let's go ahead and add a semicolon. So 4i in this command, the sequence command, I want you to do, and what do I want you to do? Let's do echo this time. I'm going to give echo these flags dash n e. And then what do I want you to echo? I want you to echo the carriage return. It's followed by dollar sign i. So dollar sign i here represents whatever numeral it happens to be on during the sequence countdown. Then after that, let's go ahead and do a semicolon because I want to enter another command after this. I want you to sleep one second, right? Because I, I don't want this sequence output of these 60 numbers to happen all instantaneously, right? I want 60, wait a second, 59, wait a second, 58, wait a second. You see how that's going to, to work? That's going to be a nice little count down there. And then finally, we need to do a semicolon and done because like the while loop has to end in done, the for loop also has to end in done. And if I did this correctly, which I'm not positive I did, 60, 59, 58, 57, so, and you see how it's all on the same line because we specified dash in and the echo, right? Meaning no new lines here. And once again, to kill the process, if you don't want to wait for the countdown, just like everything in the shell, control C will exit out of that process. Now let me go ahead and clear the screen.
Now, so far, these countdowns and timers, they've been rather plain. I want something a little fancier, maybe different letters, different coloring, uh, different font sizes, maybe some ASCII art, things like that. And we could do this. So here in the, the Bash Show, what I could do, I'm going to specify a variable. Let's do n equals 100. So we'll start counting down from 100. And what I'm going to do is semicolon. Now that we've stated that, let's start a while loop. I'm going to do while, and then let's do uh, two opening braces here, and then I'm going to do dollar sign, and then two opening parentheses here, and I'm going to do dash, dash, capital N, and then the closing two parentheses, and then greater than space zero space, and then the ending brackets, and then the semicolon, and I'm going to do echo dollar sign N. And then I'm going to also pipe that echo. So pipe the echoed in, the numeral, into this command line program, Figlet. Now, if you've been around my channel for a long time, in the early days of the channel, I talked about some really cool uh, ASCII art, ASCII text command line programs such as Figlet. Basically, what Figlet does is you pipe it some words or some numbers. Instead of just printing it out, it prints it out in these big ASCII art bubble letters. So that's kind of cool. We're going to do Figlet dash C and and sleep one, because we want to sleep for a second, let's do a semicolon, and because we have the while loop still running, we have to have it close with done. So just very quickly, what this does, we're going to set this numeral, this variable here, n to 100, and then this while loop is going to decrement n, 100, 99, 98, as long as it's over zero, it will keep that while loop running. Once it reaches zero, the while loop stops. And while that's running, it's going to echo the number that it's currently on, and it's going to pipe that number into Figlet to give us big, bubbly ASCII art letters. Let's see if this actually works. 99, 98, 97, 96. Yeah, that's really nice, but I don't like it printing the new number on new lines, I would like it to all be in one place. Let me hit control C to kill that process, clear the screen. So what I could do is I could essentially run that same command, except this time in the echo part, instead of just echoing dollar sign in, I'm going to echo two things. The first thing I'm going to echo is this escape sequence here. What is this going to do? It's going to clear our terminal and then echo the, uh, the n, the n value. So what this hopefully does is now instead of giving us that list of numbers as it counts down, hopefully the numbers are kind of in one place. Let's see if this actually works. 99, 98, 97. No, it still moves the text down. Once it reaches the bottom of the terminal, it's all in one spot. But yeah, that's not exactly what I wanted, but still kind of a neat effect. Let me control C to kill that. Once again, clear the screen. So I think what I'm going to do, let me up arrow back a couple of commands. I, I'm okay with this command here where the numbers appear each on basically their new lines. I'm okay with that, but I would like a little bit more bling to the command. So what I probably could do is instead of just doing figlet, let's go ahead and have figlet pipe into lolcat. <laughs> lolcat is a program that gives fancy like rainbow coloring to any input that gets piped into it. So we're going to echo the number into figlet to get the bubbly letters and then figlet gets piped into lolcat to give us that bubbly letter uh, rainbow coloring and let's see how that looks. That's very nice. Yeah, that's very cool. So I'm going to, you know what? I want to keep some of these countdowns and timers. How can I do that? Well, what I could do is I could, I could create a script where I could just execute the script anytime. But I think because they're such simple little programs, just a couple of lines long in most cases, it would be a good idea just to add these as functions, custom functions to our bash RC. So let me open my bash RC in a text editor. So I'm going to do a vim here, dot bash RC. And in my bash config here, uh, I have some sections, I think, where I already have some custom functions, such as, yeah, this ex function, which is an extract function. Uh, what I could do is I'm just going to create a place here above it, and I'm going to call this countdown. So I want this countdown function to be that last uh, command that we did with the figlet into lolcat. So what I need to do is I need to create a name. I'm going to call this cdown and then opening and closing parentheses, right? That signifies this is a function. And then we need opening and closing 
braces there, and this signifies everything in the braces signifies what that function, the C down function, actually is going to be. So I went ahead and essentially put the exact command that I ran in the shell, right? So n equals 100. I don't need semicolons because the line breaks are essentially the semicolons inside a script, right? So n equals 100, and then the while loop um, where we're decrementing n, and while the while loop is running, we're going to echo n, pipe it into figlet, pipe it into lolcat, and sleep one second in between every single numeral. So let me escape and then colon wq and vim to write and quit. And now let's source our bash rc. So let me clear the screen. And now that we've sourced our new bash rc, I should be able to run c down and get the countdown from 100. That's nice, but I would much prefer C down to actually take a number as an argument. So instead of counting down from 100 and only 100, I give it a number for the number of seconds for the countdown. So what I'm going to do, let's get back into our bash RC, and I'm going to edit that function just ever so slightly. So what I'm going to do is instead of n equals 100, let's make n equal dollar sign $1. That signifies user input, uh, user inputted value. So let's go ahead and colon wq. And now and let me go ahead and clear the screen. And I'm going to go ahead and source our new bash rc. Clear the screen again to get rid of that ASCII heart, right? And now let's run our C down function, and it takes now a user argument. The user argument needs to be a number. I'm going to give it five for five seconds. So four, three, two, one, zero. And of course, on zero, it terminates the process. So those are just a few different ways using standard command line utilities on Linux. You can create timers, stopwatches, countdowns. If you want something that's already been scripted for you, there are a ton of these little programs out there that you can find. One of the ones I know that's out there, I know it's in the Arch repositories, or maybe it's in the AUR, the Arch user repository, is a program called TermDown. If I do TermDown without any arguments, it says command not found. So I don't think I have TermDown install. Let's see if I can install it. Not sure if it is in the standard repository or not. It is. So let's go ahead and, and now when I up arrow and do term down again, it's just a timer. You can think of this as it's just going to go up, you know, by numeral forever. And now if you want to specify a time, what you could do is term down and then do 60 for 60 seconds, right? And then it starts at 60 and decrements all the way down to zero. Uh, control C to kill. And of course, sometimes you want to do something more than just seconds. You want to do minutes or hours. You can actually specify uh, the time with term down in hours, minutes, and seconds. So I can term down and then inside quotes, I could do one hour, zero minutes, zero seconds. So it's going to start counting down from exactly one hour from now, you know. And if I do that, there's one hour, 59 minutes, 58 seconds. You know, it's just going to keep going. Uh, and then in one hour from now, of course, it will finally terminate the process. I'm going to do control C to kill that process. So that's just some of the ways that I would, you know, create my own little custom stopwatches and timers at the command line using some of the standard basic command line utilities. I hope you guys found this educational. I know I enjoyed myself because I got to play with a, a whole bunch of command line utilities on this very short video. And these things are always fun because I think a, a lot of people imagine that scripting and programming and solving some of your real life issues in a terminal at the command line, that, that this stuff is hard and it's a lot easier than most people think. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. Of course, I need to thank the producers of this episode. Gabe, James, Matt, Maxim, Mimit, Mitchell, Paul, West, Why You Bald on Me, Alex, Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Ari, Diokai, George, Lee, Marstrom, Nate, Arian, Alexander, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Polytech, Realities for Less, Rip Prophet, Roland, Steven, Tools, Devler, and Willie, these guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this episode would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software such as the GNU Core Utils, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace. My ears are still ringing from that speaker test.